Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, we're gonna be baking a wedding cake with every possible cake flavor in it. Perfect for the bride who wants it all, literally. Now, as some of you may know, besides being engaged, betrothed, and affianced, I am also a bit of a mixing fiend, having previously mixed together many of my makeup products, hundreds of lipsticks, nail polishes, and candles. So naturally, given our nuptials this fall, we wanted to see if we could do a wedding-themed Franken experiment. And a few months ago, one of you guys sent me a tweet that got the hamster wheels in my mind a whoring. A Franken cake, you say? I was intrigued. Now, a question you might have at this point is just what does it mean to make a cake with every possible flavor? Well, the expected answer, and how we usually do our Franken videos, would be that we would mix every batter together into one mixture and then make a single cake. But following the trajectory of our pseudoscience videos getting increasingly crazy and notably large, Let her rip. and also borrowing some inspiration from the reality TV classic Cake Boss, we felt like we had to bake something a little more grand. So we decided that for our Franken wedding cake, every single flavor should get its own layer. And thus the idea of a many-tiered, giant cakezilla was born. It's time for some bad culinary science, y'all. Except this time there won't be lipstick in the cake. Unless we accidentally drop in some of our ColourPop Franken lipsticks, which are back in stock now at ColourPop.com. Shameless. <laughs> We've got our six colors and our full collection kits all back just in time to add a little batty cheer to your holiday season. Perfect for anyone who wants some nightmare with their Christmas. Yes, it's still October in my heart. Can we get back to the cake? No. All right, now as for how we're gonna make this thing, one thing to keep in mind is that we're not great bakers, let alone bakers of cake monstrosities, so we're not gonna bet on this getting to our actual wedding. In fact, we do have a backup cake purchased, but we are gonna try our best to make this bad boy as legit as possible. So we've recruited our friend and baking expert, Rosanna Pansino, to help consult us on how on earth to make a giant cake without it destroying Drawing itself and also us. All right. So we are here at Rose's house. Rose been briefed. You know, like mm -hmm. the idea, the vibe. Can you help me? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I thought about it a lot. In theory, how one would assemble this cake so it would be structurally sound mm -hmm. and you could get a lot of variety. Both of those things sound good. I think structurally sound is something that is weighing on my mind a little <laughs> bit. I feel like it could easily end up like, what are those ladies called? The, go the fairy godmothers mm -hmm. from Sleeping Beauty and their cake just kind of like falls over. I, I see that. Yeah. I see that happening for me. Now, wedding cakes are traditionally made in like a tiered structure where each tier gets smaller as you go up for stability. Now, a tier is four cake layers put together and you ice them and that's a tier. And conventionally, each layer is one inch tall with frosting in between. Now, how many tiers can you make a cake? That's a question. Woo! Now, obviously we wanna make a cake with as many layers as possible to fit as many flavors as possible. But there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One is that they only make circular cake pans so big and so small, so we're gonna be limited by like literally what is purchasable. The other limitation is the size of our ovens. The ovens in our house are kind of small, so we're planning on renting industrial ovens for the big boys, but even they have their limits. So it seems that our largest pan size is gonna have to be 18 inches wide, and and the smallest, four. Technically goes to a three inch, but I would stop at a four inch because a three inch cake tin is- It's a little baby. It's basically a cupcake. And if the size of the pans increase two inches at a time, we'll have eight tiers in total. So basically, we are gonna be able to have 32 different flavors, which is obviously not every flavor imaginable, but when it comes to conventional wedding cake flavors, it's a good chunk of them. I got you a list of different oh my flavors God. that you could pair together. Thank you. Now, in terms of which flavors we're gonna use, we have 
two main objectives. To have as diverse of a cake as possible, looks-wise and taste-wise, and also to pick cake types that could support layers above and below it. Which unfortunately rules out like mousses, souffles, tiramisus, or flans. Great cakes, but not very stackable. To highlight the different flavors as well, we're also going to be making corresponding frostings to go in between the layers. Whoa. So you have like the true Franken cake experience. And once we decorate it like a wedding cake, we're going to be tasting the cake as tears, as well as figuring out a way to taste all 32 flavors at once. Do you think that sounds too crazy? <sighs> it's definitely an intimidating undertaking. <sighs> okay. <laughs> But I think after talking with Ro, we at least have somewhere to start. All right. So after having ordered an ungodly amount of cake pans, grabbing all of our ingredients and prepping some stuff, we are ready for our bake-a-thon. So basically today we are all hands on deck, which means that I'm going to be mixing and baking. Tyler's going to be mixing and baking. That's you, Tyler. Oh yeah. Um, and then our team member, Mylin, who has been helping us plan this project is also going to be baking. So we're going to be mixing and baking many cakes at the same time. You sound like a frog. Sorry, we recently went to Vegas for our bachelor slash bachelorette party, so my voice may be shot. <laughs> may? Is. Okay, there you go. We've rented ovens, we've rented fridges and freezers. We went to Costco, we got like more eggs than anyone ever. It's a, it's a production. We're an unlicensed bakery. We are super unlicensed. <laughs> the oven's preheated. <laughs> now, some of the cakes we're gonna be making from scratch, but because of the sheer quantity of cakes we have to make, there is some cake mix around. And by some, I mean a lot. Also, as we go, we're gonna be adding in the extra batter into a sort of slop cup, I guess for lack of better term. And we're gonna make a true Franken cupcake out of our extra batter yeah. to put on the top of our giant Franken wedding cake. And that's how we're gonna taste all the flavors at once. All right. Is it time? Should we start? As for the main cake flavors, we're obviously going to be including some of the more basic cake mixes, like the chocolates, vanillas, and funfettis of the world. Woohoo! Party! And we've decided to use them primarily in the bigger layers at the bottom. We do have a lot oh, of sh Man overboard. New plan, bottom layer, plastic flavor. <laughs> now these bottom layers are gonna take a lot of ingredients. Open the eggs, we need the eggs. Bring the eggs in here. So thankfully we have this automatic mixer to do some of the heavy lifting on these big bowls of batter. All right, once everything's incorporated, I'll make it go fast. You don't need to make it go too fast. I like to make it go fast. I know, you're gonna cause a disaster. I like to mix fast. Week. All right, too much, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast. Can't go that fast. And once the batters are ready, we're gonna take Take the big ones like these down to the garage where our industrial ovens are. Oh my God, it's hot in here. And pour them into their appropriate pans, which we've pre-greased and parchment papered. And then we'll put them into the oven. My hands are like really, really sweaty. So in addition to the sort of chocolate and vanilla category, we have some other bigger layers. I feel like one of the mice in Cinderella trying to build her dress. Also with just straight up box mix, but they're a little more fun kind of with flavors like lemon, strawberry, pumpkin spice, and good old just spice. Which spice girl are you, Ty? I don't know, I think I'm baby spice. Oh yeah? Yeah, because I got a youthful spirit. <laughs> Which one am I? I don't know, depends what day it is. Some days you're scary <laughs> spice. And these of course are also gonna get poured into their giant pans. Oh my God, guys, it's Neapolitan ice cream, as well as stuck into the oven. To the oven. I wash yourself, Safi. To the club! To the oven. Woo! Which I think Tyler might be scared of. It looks like the furnace from Home Alone. It's got like a face. Welcome to hell. <laughs> We also have some fun straight up cake mixes in smaller pan sizes as well, like Angel's Food Cake, Salted Caramel, Butter Yellow, Cookies and Cream, and Red Velvet. You're just trying to do the choreo? All right, no one's gonna know what we're talking about. <laughs> Someone will know. Well, I'm talking about the cake flavor red velvet. Look how red this is actually. I didn't realize that Whoa! red velvet was that red. But Tyler's talking about the K-pop group. Now that is truly some red flavor. <laughs> and the smaller cakes in general are gonna be going in our upstairs non-rental ovens. These two cakes next to each other give me strong McDonald's vibes. It's like the burger patty and like what's left of Ronald McDonald. That makes me not want to eat it. Now our cake mixes are mostly Betty Crocker, but we do have the these two British mixes from King Arthur Flour. This is kind of like the Great British Bake Off from Hell. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mary Berry wants you to bake a giant cake. A Franken cake. You fools! And these are like slightly more difficult mixes, or at least different recipes. Hello. Why are you, what, this is not, Tyler, this is the recipe. Tyler just put water in and then put eggs in. Put the mix in, Tyler. It says whisk together water, eggs, and oil, add cake mix. Stirring until okay, smooth. Okay, all right, fine, I believe you. It just looks it's very- It's a British box. They drive on the other side of the road, okay? Makes sense. Editor's note, it turns out this company is actually based in Vermont, but at the time, we really thought they were British. Besides those, we also have like a large amount of cake flavors that we're making by taking plain mixes and then adding extra ingredients into them, like cinnamon, peanut butter. That's definitely not enough. That's not enough? No. Oh, wow. And peppermint extract. Ooh, that smells strong. That smells like the ladies' locker room at a spa. And we're kind of just adding these in to taste. Well, that's good. You don't need more peppermint in that. You can taste it. Give it another hit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Some of these are gonna need food coloring. It looks like a shamrock shake. It does look like a shamrock shake. It's a Grinch cake. While others will just get their color from their extra ingredients. Ooh. Yeah. That looks artsy. They call me matcha bay. Who calls you that? Maybe people do have matcha for their wedding cake because then you could say, we're the perfect matcha. <laughs> we are also gonna be making cake flavors by replacing the water in the box mix recipe with different liquids, like orange juice, coconut cream, hot chocolate, and coffee. Ooh, that's what I need right now. Just a little sniff. Oh, that was Folgers to the face. As well as lime juice and champagne. Are you gonna shoot that off in here? Well, where else am I gonna go? I right, don't let it just spray everywhere. All right, don't just don't shoot it right into my- Don't the light. <laughs> Full disclosure, I am not very good at this. Oh! Oh my God! <laughs> wow, that was actually pretty explosive. That was good. I'm glad that everyone pointed me in the right direction because that could have been really bad. It was bad. like redirecting a cannon like Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're hoping that these more unique flavors like the pink champagne and the matcha, Cosmo and wine, Wanda ain't slick will give us some serious visual impact in the cross section. And then our final few layers are all gonna be made from scratch, like butterscotch, hazelnut almond, pineapple, and bananas foster. A lot of butter for the butterscotch. Okay, so many hours, boxes, and ingredients later, we've mixed up 32 separate batters and we've gotten them all in the oven. This is taking my total cake baked number from like four to like 36. <laughs> <laughs> now cakes have also been coming out of ovens. We're not just leaving them in there. Okay. You got Come it. Down. You got it. Booyah! And the ones coming out of our industrial ovens are looking pretty promising. Oh, oh sh what was that noise? It sounded like a velociraptor. And then once they've cooled off enough, we're putting them in the fridge. I feel like there's probably somebody outside casing our house right now, and they're like, no, you don't understand. They have like a lot of cakes. <laughs> Now the upstairs oven is a little bit of a different story. Oh my God. <laughs> it's all bad. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's crazy over here. Oh my God, it's going crazy over oh, here. Should we do something about this? In general, I don't think it's a great oven. This is, this is real, this is real, this is real problem. So right we have a fire extinguisher. But specifically the duo of butter yellow and mint tried to take the house down. <laughs> like we're filming this. <laughs> well, it smells minty fresh. It does. Something about the butter yellow caused it to overflow into the mint, causing then the mint to overflow into the oven. The ring of fire! The ring of fire! Okay, I think that's that's the best we can do for now. Now they are baked and the house is still standing, but that one's on our sh list. Why are you the way that you are, cake? So now that our cakes are all baked, we can move on to our slop cup, which we've been adding our extra batter to all day. It looks like Rachel Green's truffle. The trifle? Yeah. Lady fingers, cream, then beef sauteed with peas and onions. <laughs> Another round of lady fingers. And we've actually filled up three full buckets as we've been baking. Oh, it looks Ooh. weird. Oh yeah. It looks like bacon. A little meaty. To go into our Franken cupcake batter. Whoa! That's Whoa! <laughs> that was pretty gloopy. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that one looks very appetizing, actually. Yeah. All right, let's blend these biatches. Ooh! Oh, it's thick. Okay, the green is disappearing. Yeah. The red is reappearing. We're seeing some serious red velvet. So it actually doesn't look as unappetizing as I thought it would. No. I feel like most of our cakes were brown, but that like red velvet cake really just asserted its dominance and made it red. It smells kind of minty. You did dose it with that peppermint sauce. Yeah, I mean, I smell mint and like, 
weirdly, maybe banana? And then once we've scooped it all into the cupcake pan, we'll take it down to the oven. Hopefully the last thing to go into the oven, ever. <laughs> Hopefully the last thing I ever put into an oven. <laughs> all right. And see you. I, I like that baby. You know the baby I'm talking about. So it's about 30 minutes later and our cupcakes are ready. They exploded a little bit at the top. They look awesome. They look unbelievable. It almost looks like a Venus flytrap with a tongue or like a little bit like Demogorgony, but we'll deal with these dudes later. For now, they go in the fridge. But to finish off our night, we have to level all of the cakes that we've baked and cooled so that they're all exactly one inch tall and also flat. And our plan is to use both cake level which are these kind of cheese wire type situations. Haha, uh -huh, it worked. Yes, yes. As well as knives for the cakes that are either too crumbly or too large for the levelers. Look at my Lynn's last cake, man. This is flat as f And after we level them, we're gonna pop the cakes out of their pans. It's moving. It's out! And then wrap them, label them, and put them into the freezer so they're easier to handle when we're building, which we're gonna do tomorrow. All right, so here we are on our cake building day. So we're gonna start off by building each tier individually using our corresponding frosting flavors between each layer, which we've pre-made by mixing the appropriate ingredients into a vanilla or chocolate buttercream base. And in addition to putting our frosting into piping bags, we're also gonna be using this fancy dancy cake turntable so I can just squeeze that bag and the cake will move underneath me. All right, let's. <laughs> Let's do this. So I'm gonna start with the six inch layer and the one that's gonna be on the bottom is orange chocolate. Rosanna had recommended that we put cake boards at the bottom of all of our tiers for stability. So I'm gonna add some vanilla frosting to the bottom of the cake and then just stick it on there. Just as vanilla ice was a glue to the music industry in the 90s. What the? Vanilla icing Who? will be a glue for this. What are you talking base. about? And after that, I'm gonna put the orange frosting on top of our orange chocolate cake. Oh, it's coming out, Ty. Right, it's coming ready? out fast. Ready? And we want the frosting to be pretty thick and even. Oh. I'm figuring it out so it can support the layers above. This is actually looking kind of decent. It's pretty erotic. And then we just start stacking our layers. All right, next up is banana. The only dynamic to be aware of is that with a four layer tier, there are only like three inner frosting locations. So one of the layers is gonna be flying solo, like our banana cake, which is gonna have chocolate cappuccino frosting on top to go with the chocolate cappuccino cake. I'm already interested by this flavor combination. Yeah. And then we have matcha cake and frosting to round out the tier. You're matcha me crazy. No, it's we're a matcha made in heaven. So when we specked out the cake, we tried to like sort of distribute the flavors and colors for maximum visual diversity as well as flavor surprise. I guess I would say. And I think that this tier is definitely gonna be hitting a lot of different taste buds. It's like your coffee and your fruit in the morning. Yeah, actually that's right. So we'll see if that strategy comes back to bite us when we taste it. But for now, let's move on to the eight inch cake, which is sort of like a spicy, almost Valentine's Day-ish tier because we have chocolate cinnamon, unleash the power, red velvet, devil's food, and pink champagne in it. Ooh, yeah. Rock and roll, man. Cake, frost, and rock and roll. Those are my three vices, yes. man. All right, so that is the eight inch tier down. Now we're going for 10. Now for this tier, we have salted caramel, our spawn of Satan butter yellow cake, our British but not British eggnog one, and some coconut on top. I feel like this one kind of looks like a filet -o fish or like a, a crispy chicken sandwich. Frozen patty vibes. Yeah. Besides that, we actually don't have much in terms of a theme for this tier, but it looks and sounds pretty tasty. That looks like the kind of cake you want to take out to a nice seafood dinner. You don't even like seafood. I, I want to date this cake is what I'm trying to say. That's so rude. This is our wedding cake. <laughs> All right. What is this? Who am I? What's happening? This is the 10 inch. This is the 10 inch tier. Now we're on to the 12. So this tier is kind of like a mashup combination of flavors you might find in a tropical climate because you have coffee beans with the mocha cake. Oh, shiz. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's a thick one. It's a thick one, Mr. Grinch. Cacao beans with the hot chocolate cake. Oh, I almost stabbed myself. Don't stab yourself. We're trying to minimize stabbing in this video. <laughs> minimize stabbing, maximize flavor, followed by a lime layer and then like a mint mojito on top. This looks like a pile of toothpaste, but I feel like it might taste good because it smells awesome. All right, high five. 
Oh. <laughs> I tricked him into that one. So now we're on to our 14 inch tier. And we are starting off with Spice. This tier is kind of like the Professor Utonium from Powerpuff Girls section, mainly because there's a lot of spice going on. Sugar, spice, everything nice. These are the three ingredients to create the perfect little girl. We're just missing a little chemical X, but we do have some vanilla and some German chocolate to make up for it. How is German chocolate cake different from other chocolate cake? It has an umlaut. Ah, it's chocolate. <laughs> It's kook. Now I'm not gonna pretend like I've been killing it with the piping overall. I'm just not that good at this and I'm getting exposed. But I think my forearms are getting kind of tired. So Tyler has been helping me out with it. Your hands are wild right now. High five. I know I got you with that earlier, but you are not getting me with that now. We've also entered the territory with these cakes where just moving them at all is a two person job. The paper slippery. Okay, how all right, nice. watch out for the frosting bucket. Watch out for the clothing. Watch out for the wires, the dowels, watch out the, the camera. Chassis. Watch out, step. You that was probably the most important one, I forgot about it. So next up, we have the 16 inch layers, which I'm deeming flavors you might inject into a donut with some richer notes like butterscotch and Nutella, and then some fruity notes like lemon frosting. One shortest note. Oh f Which I guess we may have let thaw a little too long. Oh my oh, God. F Keep going, keep going. Whoa, this is a runaway lemon. What the hell? Screw banana time, it's lemon time. Oh. Oh. And on top of that, we have lemon cake, strawberry icing, rip. which is not quite as crazy as the lemon one, and strawberry cake. That was bold. That was pretty good. That's how Regina George died. <laughs> She got hit by a giant cake. <laughs> but with that one put away, it's time for the biggest boy, the 18 incher. Slide, 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 slide. You sound like Ross. Pivot, pivot. Now this tier has a peanut butter cake on the bottom that has started to get a little crumbly. So we're gonna be very careful and we're gonna adhere it to the cake board, cracks down, and then hopefully if we just kind of move on as if nothing's happened, we'll be all good. A peanut butter frosting that Tyler is going to be squeezing because he's been getting pretty good at it. I'm like entering a headspace with this. Are you entering a zone? Yes. Is it auto zone? Yes. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then chocolate, carrot cake, and funfetti frosting and cake on top. Ooh, 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 ooh. Did that work? Uh, it's on. And I'm gonna say the theme of this tier is that they're all just giant. All the way up, all the way up. Will it fit? Will it fit? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah! My hands got buttery. <laughs> I could feel it. Yeah! So with all of our other tiers built and put away, we're going all the way to the tippy top for the four inchers. Oh my God, it's so cute! Yeah. It's a baby shark. In this tier, we have cookies and cream, pineapple cake and frosting, hazelnut almond cake, and then cherry icing. There's a few uh, what we call Guy Fieri's on top here. A few frost tips, little spikes. Which is supposed to pair with our angel's food cake layer. Uh, we saved it for the top because it is very delicate and weak. So we're gonna see what happens. Don't breathe on it. Well, sorry. Now with all of our tiers built, it's time to frost the outside of each one individually before stacking them on top of each other. And basically what we're doing is first applying a crumb coat of our frosting, which is sort of like an initial thin layer, then putting them back into the freezer before adding like an exterior final layer of frosting. We have enough vanilla frosting in life. We yeah. have like a paint bucket's worth, so like I hope that's enough. I don't know how much that is. 30. 35 pounds? And I think I've been kind of figuring it out. Okay, does that look crazy or does it look artful? It's kind of like rustic looking. That's like a wedding vibe, right? It's like the barn vibe. This is the stucco facade that no one on House Hunters wants. They want crown molding though. And then once they're done, they go into the fridge for storage. The only one that seems to be presenting a problem is the tiny cake, because I'm afraid that if I use my big metal scraper on it, it'll just like fall over. So I've been using a piping bag, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, the frosting is kind of drooping off of it. Who knew that it would be the four inch one that would be my downfall? So my new plan is to just go at it with my hands. Like what if I built it a fortress of frosting and then squished it inside? We'll call it the fortress of solitude. Yes, I'm going to caress the frosting onto the cake. All right, guys, it's time for a rebrand. We're not selling lipsticks anymore. We're selling hand massaged frosting. That's my new merch item. And once the frosting is on, we can try to shape it by shaving off the excess. Okay, 
that's not bad. And then use the metal tools to, you know, make it look artsy. It looks like a bandaged head. I was gonna say it looks like the Invisible Man. Okay, so with that, we are done building and frosting all of our tiers. So the only thing that's left to do is to put them all on top of each other and build our final cake, which we're gonna do tomorrow because we spent all day doing this. So good night again and see you in the morning, which is right now. Now, how we stack the tiers is actually pretty important because as Ro let us know, no matter how much good baking we've done, if we don't have the right support, the cake might not survive. Now for structure, let's yes. talk structure. As we mentioned, we have a cake board at the bottom of each tier, which sneakily has like a little circle cut out at the center. So what we're gonna do is use a big mama dowel or big stick. This is probably the most dangerous part. And essentially thread all the layers onto it. We're also gonna be using complementary smaller dowels in each individual tier, which we're gonna be measuring to the height of our tiers, chopping, Whoa! I mean business. And then sticking in. And the reason you do that is because when you stack on the other layer on top, the dowels will support the cake board so that your oh. cakes don't just kind of like squish into each other. Yeah, they don't end up like stacking cakes. And what we found on the internet is that you should use the diameter of the cake divided by two number of dowels in each respective tier. I have like a large wad of frosting right here. How did I get there? I don't even know. It's like very early on. In the day. And now we do this seven more times. Whoa! I'm melting! It's a minty surprise. It seems like it should get easier as you keep going because the cakes get smaller. Oh, 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 oh. Shark bait, ooh ha ha. But handling like a tower of cakes is kind of terrifying, especially when the top layer will just not cooperate. It's not heavy enough, so gravity's not like doing that much work right now. No. This is your final boss, huh? I'm like literally We're screwing. <laughs> I'm literally screwing the top on. I should have known it would come to this. All right, I think that's on. It looks like a, I'm a man. It looks like the Michelin man, <laughs> but a cone. And together, it's coming in at an impressive 47 inches tall, which means that the frosting is accounting for a full 15 inches of height. In fact, that might be the most impressive part. It looks like the Burj Khalifa. I mean, it's basically the Burj Khalifa of cakes, so. It's the Burj Cake Khalifa. Yeah, nailed it in the corner. Not terrible. <laughs> Not the worst. We still have our cupcake that needs to go on top and also some decorations that we bought, but this is pretty close to its final form. Update, the top three cakes are leaning pretty heavily to the left. So um, it is living up to its inspo of the leaning Sleeping Beauty cake. We're gonna try and make a little shim out of cake board and put it right here because it's this layer that's like leaning them all over. That actually is doing something. So can you cut that off and put a flower there? Yeah. <laughs> flower it, baby! <laughs> While we were stacking them, we tried to put our cakes on as evenly as possible, but they're still wanting to lean. All right, now it's this way. What if we shim right here? Right in the front? Yeah. It's like we're feeding a monster. It seems like the shims are helping, but I still think we'd better add our finishing touches fast. Ty, you film the whole time. <laughs> in case it falls, we need every camera on it. <laughs> so we're gonna stick our Franken cupcake on top, as well as a little custom cat bat cake topper. He's roosting. He's looking pretty good, Sophia. We also ransacked a local Joann's, so we have some spooky flowers, ribbons, and buttons that we can stick on there as well. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, it's cute as hell. And with our extra decorations, it's kind of giving off a sweet but ghoulish vibe, which I'm liking a lot. It is, even with our shims, sort of continuing to lean this general direction. Right now, I think with all of these sort of like spooky decorations, it's sort of Tim Burton-esque. It is looming over the ground. Now we're getting pretty close to actually tasting our Franken cake, and we've been coordinating with Rosanna to have her come over so we can reveal our creation to her and she can try it with us. However, we're all pretty terrified that this cake is gonna fall over before she gets here, so I'm just gonna hold it, just to be safe. I'm literally just babysitting this cake right now. 11 minutes, Rose says. I think this cake has made us its bitch. Okay guys, Rosanna's here. Hey Ro. Hey. Hi Ro. Welcome to our clean house. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hi Rosanna. I'm also nervous. Rosanna, I'm nervous. I'm holding this cake for dear life. We've done everything we need to do with this thing, so it's time to see what she thinks as our baking guru. This is our uh, extreme house makeover thing. Where, <gasps> move that bus. Okay, move yeah, yeah, yeah. that! 
curtain. <gasps> oh. oh my gosh. Sophia, this is as tall as it's taller than me. <laughs> it is literally taller than me. This is amazing. I see the cake plates. And this is, oh my god, this is gorgeous. Oh, 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 you did the cupcake on the top. Yeah. There's a little bear. Rosanna. Oh my, are you holding it together? At this point, yes. My hand is really crampy, but it's here and you're here, so I'm happy. But I think to actually slice it, we're gonna have to disassemble it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're moments away from disaster. Now, people actually do this with normal tiered cakes, like you have to take it apart to eat it. So I think it's in our best interest to deconstruct it now. Look at all the support. Nice job, you guys. We did our best. You, if you didn't do support, you wouldn't even have got to here. And once the cake is completely and safely disassembled, we can actually cut some slices out of them and try them. Oh my gosh, this is very dense. You do have to use some muscle to cut these bad boys. I'm shaking. I'm literally shaking. Her hand is shaking, yeah. The oh, bottom layer is oh a little- Oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bro. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> but the cross sections of the slices are coming out looking pretty bomb.com. Yes. Ooh. Beautiful. That looks so good. Except for the poor angel's food cake, which seems to have gotten squished. I think the angel food may have just absorbed frosting. It looks I like know, just- look a how thin it got. Look how thin it got. It, 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 it's like this. So with all of our slices sliced, it's taste test time. Taste the rainbow if you will. Now, Ro actually doesn't know what's in any of these cakes. No. So I'm interested to see what you think the layers taste like. So we're gonna taste all of our tears before we try our Franken cupcake. Look at this, we got every flavor in there. That happened so fast. That happened so <laughs> fast. Starting with our 18 inch hearty traditional tear. Oh my God. That's amazing. It's really good. <laughs> That's so good, what the it's hell? It's really good. What, what do you taste? I can see this is like some funfetti. Oh, don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Any flavors coming out at you? The aftertaste is chocolate. For me, I taste peanut butter, carrot only. Really? Yeah, there's peanut butter. That's that's a peanut butter cake at the bottom. That's why it's so messed up because I put too much peanut butter in there. <laughs> Regardless if this one tastes more like chocolate or like peanut butter, it's pretty good and Tyler agrees. That is awesome. You went ham with the peanut butter and uh, it's paying dividends. Overall, a lot of the sections of the Franken cake do actually taste really good. In particular, the 14 inch spice and everything nice tier is a real winner. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're really well together. Those are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that one's so good. It's kind of just like a cocktail of holiday goodness. Oh, it just tastes like Christmas. It's like you just shotgun a gingerbread house. Oh yeah. And despite all of the headaches it's caused me, the four inch tier is also quite nice. Oh. Crunchy. Oh. oh. That one's pretty good. The flavors aren't 100% on the same power level as each other. Pineapple's one of my favorite flavors. I didn't taste it at all. But what you can taste tastes pretty good. I think what I tasted was the cookies and cream and the cherry frosting, actually. Now, as for the rest of the tiers, there are a couple that are not bad, but flavor-wise are a little uneven, like our 16-inch pastry filler tier. Whoa, strawberry. Oh. A lemon, or is that lemon? It's not strawberry. No, it's a strawberry. Lemon? I agree with Ro. Whoa. Strawberry, then lemon, then nothing. <laughs> All lemon. The 10-inch chicken sandwich looking tier is also a bit questionable. Oh my, what is that? Okay, it's not terrible. Is this a lot? It's weird. With the primary taste ending up being the caramel cake and the eggnog frosting. A lot, a lot of eggnog. Take that back. A lot of imitation rum. Caramel, lots of caramel. Eggnog. Ro, She's right. Ro has had a moment of clarity. She's right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Shut up! Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> yes, yes, Star Baker. What, what, Star Baker? I don't even know what she's talking about. Star Baker. <laughs> the other tier that's sort of confusing is the six inch fruit, coffee, and matcha in the morning cake. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Orange leaf, something earthy. Actually, it's growing on me. I actually kind of like the combo. I think it started off kind of good, then it got kind of bad, and now it's okay. Like, I, I went through a, an emotional arc with it, I would say. But I'm not sure that Ro likes it. I was like, orange, whoa, it's happening. 
But since Tyler's on my side, the matcha's not bad. I would actually say that was my favorite part of it. I think we're outvoting row two to one and putting it in the middle category instead of sliding it down to our third category, the cacophonous flavor combinations. It's like blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, our flavors found in a tropical climate tier ended up being kind of strange. That one tastes the most like a mashup cake of all of them so far. Okay. Ro does not like <laughs> Ro it. Ro has an Whoa. aversion to mint. Do you need your water? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh my gosh. We broke Ro. Now, I don't think it tastes like orange juice and toothpaste, but I might just have a high mint tolerance. I do not hate it nearly as much as Ro does. I hate it. Because Tyler hates it too. Well, that's weird. What is that? That's almost like a lotion. Maybe that's why I liked it. Now, this cake is not alone in this category. Saf is noping out right now. As the eight inch lusty tier is also not great. This is weird. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be romantic cake. That is <laughs> weird. That one's weird. Chocolate's supposed to put it in the mood. This is not putting it in the mood. The cinnamon is the primary cause of Rose undoing. The aftertaste is so so cinnamony and so like, <gasps> but underratedly, I think the champagne flavor is the one taking it to Funky Town. It's like a little boozy. So the overall taste is like a spicy jello shot. I'm gonna call this cake the choker. <laughs> but hopefully the Franken cupcake can wash that away. Now, Ro actually doesn't know that it's a Franken flavor. All right, Ro, can I feed this to you? I don't want you to see it. Okay, I'm closing my eyes. So let's see if she can give us an unbiased taste. What is it? What does it taste like? Oh, I don't know. It's really mild, nice, and I can't put a finger on it. All the flavors are hanging out. All right, Sasha, do you want to tell Ro? Okay. It's impossible to guess. What it actually is, okay. is all of these batters mixed together. Oh, <gasps> shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's the Franken cupcake. Oh my gosh, it didn't actually taste bad. <laughs> After trying it myself, I think that Ro is right. It's definitely not bad. To me, it tasted like vanilla, cinnamon, and lemon, but like a little deeper, a little not too sweet. And Tyler is actually a pretty big fan. Oh, it is good. Oh, I got the lemon. Lemon, right? There's lemon in there. I'm tasting a little bit of matcha. There is like a depth to the flavor. Yeah, I think it's matcha. Why am I saying that like I know what I'm talking about? Like, mm, yeah. Ro and I It know. does. Just as a final test, we also mashed up pieces of our cake into a single spoonful or Franken bite, which Tyler tried mm. and seemed to like. I don't know what it is. It means everything, but I love it. I'm sensing nutmeg. Nutmeg, mint, and maybe a little lemon. So there you have it. It tastes like something and a hint of lemon. So with a pretty definite sugar crash inbound, that is our Franken wedding cake. Now I'm guessing this video is not gonna end up being short, but regardless, it won't actually reflect just how many hours this cake actually took to make. I think all in, it probably took about 72 waking hours of egg cracking, hand mixing, frosting, and moving things in and out of industrial freezers. Did anyone see that? But in the end, I. I think we came out with one heck of a cake. I'm not sure this thing is gonna make a cameo at our wedding, mostly because our hands have been all up in it. I can't promise you I haven't touched every part of this cake. So it probably wouldn't be kosher to give it to our guests, but we now have frozen Franken cake and frankly ingredients for years. So there will be many future sugar crashes to be had by us and our hardworking team at the hands of our creation. Once again, a huge thank Thank you to Ro, our baking sensei, without whom this Franken cake would have become a Russian nesting doll. And also a huge thank you to Tyler for agreeing to get all of our cake smashing impulses out now and not on our wedding day. Oh, oh my God. God. That was horrible. All right, we're not doing that again. No. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. A big shout out to Rachel for watching. Thanks for watching, Rachel. And we will see you guys a next time.